You are watching the fourth video in the tutorial series for Crossout. You're already familiar with combat, trading, and crafting. Now let's suppose that you've collected enough parts to upgrade your vehicle in a serious way. It's time to go to the garage to spend countless happy hours there. Everything starts with the humble car frame. The car frame is extremely important as frames are the literal base of your vehicle, and your cabin and movement parts have to be connected to the frame no matter what. Build a line out of two or three 4x4 frames. This is a basic structure that is easy to work with. After you finish preparing the car frame, turn on the grid view by pressing F. This mode highlights all places where parts can be placed and allows you to mount your parts in an intelligent way so that they don't interfere with each other. This way, you'll never have to wonder why you can't place a part somewhere. The next step is to install a cabin. Before we do that, though, let's take a good look at its characteristics. Different cabins have different tonnage, speed, and energy values. The energy stat is especially important because it determines how many energy-consuming parts can be used on your vehicle. Keep in mind that energy is required for both weapons and all sorts of useful equipment. When building, it's important to have a plan. It's a good idea to prioritize speed, armor, long-range weapons, or melee weapons, but not everything at once. It is possible to build a jack of all trades, but as the saying goes, it'll be a master of none, and in many cases will be inferior to specialized builds. Also, don't forget that the higher the power score of your vehicle, the stronger your opponents will be in PvP. Your cabin, weapons, and equipment are all major contributors to your overall power score. Frames, wheels, structural parts, and decor have lower PS values, but they still add to your power scores. To put it simply, more parts mean harder fights. After we've finished with the cabin, it's time to add some movement parts, like wheels. It's a good idea to do it now. If you build the rest of the car before that, it might be difficult to squeeze them in. You might even be forced to reconfigure parts of your design. Don't forget to have at least two steering wheels in the front. It's entirely possible to build a car that only uses steering wheels, but it can become a bit twitchy, which is something that you certainly don't want on a fast, lightweight vehicle. To be fair, a heavier one might actually benefit from that. In the wastes, if you can't move, you're dead. So don't be too stingy with your movement parts. In many cases, the more the better. Later on, you'll be able to replace ordinary wheels with tracks or mecha legs, but this early in the game, it simply pays to have as many wheels as you can. You'll lose a lot of them every battle, trust us. Another way to keep your wheels intact is to make it harder for enemies to damage them. For example, you can mount your wheels on narrower frames so that they don't stick out as much, even though it'll make your car less stable at high speeds and when turning. Slap on some fenders and armor, or preferably both, and you're done. Now enemies will have a harder time trying to immobilize you. Let's talk about weapons. This early in the game, you're likely to rely on machine guns, shotguns, or cannons. Later on, your arsenal will be expanded with borers, saws, rocket launchers, flamethrowers, and many other goodies. There are all sorts of weapons in Crossout, with vastly different characteristics. The amount of energy they need to function, their range, their damage values, their fire rate, and the time it takes them to overheat, there are lots of parameters to consider. But there's always a limit to the number of weapons that your car can handle. So you typically either go with several guns that are on the weaker side, or choose quality over quantity. Both options are viable, just pick the one that suits your playstyle. It's also important to consider the firing angles of your weapons. A cannon mounted on top of your vehicle might be very effective at medium to long range, but it'll be next to useless up close. That's why weapons for close quarters combat, like shotguns, are usually mounted pretty low, right on the hood or to the side of your vehicle. Make good use of the grid view to place your weapons so that they touch several other parts at once. This way, the enemy will have to waste time trying to score a direct hit on your guns or destroying all parts that support them. Naturally, 
make sure that the parts you stick your guns to are pretty durable on their own. If they're gone, your weapon will be lost as well. The next step of the building process is to install special equipment. Don't just mount everything you have. Plan it carefully to get specific advantages. Modules that are especially handy early on are the car jack, to put you back on your wheels if you get flipped, the radar, to detect enemies, the fuel barrel, it allows you to receive more fuel that is needed for raids, the radiator or the cooler, so that your weapon doesn't overheat as fast or cools down faster. If you need more energy, get a generator. And if you feel that your vehicle is too slow, equip it with an engine or some boosters. There are also ammo packs that provide additional ammo for weapons that use it, and the radio, which increases the range at which your teammates will receive spotted enemies from you. Keep in mind that some parts can explode. That's especially true for ammo packs, fuel barrels, and generators. These things go boom after just a couple of hits, so it's a good idea to hide them under layers and layers of other parts. Some survivors, though, prefer to mount them right in the front so that they can use them to blast other players. Not to mention that this way, their inevitable detonation won't destroy half of your vehicle. Finally, let's get some armor. It's a pretty straightforward process. Just make a note of parts' weights and their contribution to your vehicle's overall durability. The first things to cover are your modules, sides of the cabin, and anything that might explode. Weapons are also pretty vulnerable to enemy fire, so it's a good idea to cover them with armor as well. Just make sure that you don't go overboard or they might not be able to fire as effectively. Well, now you know how to make a pretty advanced vehicle that is well suited for hectic battles in the wastes. Naturally, we barely scratched the surface here. But this is just the beginning of your journey. Who knows? Maybe you'll come up with tactical and engineering tricks that we're not even aware of. The game gives you a lot of creative freedom, and it's up to you to use this freedom to blaze your own path to glory. That's it for the tutorial series, by the way. Have fun building crazy vehicles, and see you in battle!